A while back on this channel, we of course took a look at one of the most notorious modern horror experiences. A movie which is so notorious, in fact, that despite not really deserving its notoriety, if you just mention its name to people who haven't seen it, they immediately have a nasty feeling, and that is of course The Human Centipede. A movie which, to those who haven't seen it, probably sounds like the worst cinematic experience they could experience, and to those of us who have seen it, you know it's pretty much the most overrated horror movie in terms of what it actually delivers of the 2000s and later. Because yes, it has a great name, it has a great concept, and it certainly has a great reputation, albeit an undeserved one for the most part, but it doesn't deliver. And in my review of the first one, I covered those points. It's a crime drama slash thriller with decent production values, an interesting concept, and some cool characters, but it never delivers on what you're expecting of it. It's not a disturbing film, let's just say it as it is. It's not disturbing, there's very little gore, and although, of course, gore is not required for great horror, far from it, there are definitely certain films which deserve to have a ton of gore. That's kind of the point. And if there was any like that, it's this franchise. Now, of course, there are three movies. This one in particular is the second sequence. And I would say, actually quite confidently, to be honest, that if you haven't seen any of the Human Centipede films, you should watch this one first, because this is the one of the three which delivers the most on what you're expecting of the Human Centipede. It's dark, it's grimy, it's weird, it's nasty for sure, very mean-spirited, but not without its downsides. It definitely has some fantastic special effects, some great makeup, great practical effects, tons of gore, to the point where eventually it doesn't mean much anymore, it's that kind of gore, but I will say it definitely has its flaws. Now, I'm not going to spoil any specific plot points or character arcs or anything like that, of course, but the essential concept and the reason why I think that you can check this one out even before the first one is because the first movie is just that in this universe. It's just a movie. It's a DVD. And the main character is a super fan of this DVD. You get the impression it's probably the only movie that he watches, he's got a scrapbook of all the art, he's obsessive over it, almost to a sexual level, and that has roots in his past and in his upbringing, and I would say that actually some of the implied background of the main character is by far the most disturbing thing about the whole film, because unlike the rest of the film, it's not played for laughs. Because although this isn't technically a comedy, it's so ridiculously over the top that you do end up laughing at most of it whereas the implied backstory and certain sound clips that you hear implying the main character's past, they are nasty, seriously nasty, and it's by far the most disturbing thing, as I said, about this entire film, as far as I'm concerned. But that leads into his obsession with this movie, and like many super fans, he wants to go beyond just loving it, he wants to make something as an homage to it, and if possible, to make it better. At least, that's what he is doing, even if he probably doesn't recognise it in his own implied limited intelligence, let's just put it that way. He gets called names by a number of people in the movie, but he's clearly a smarter guy than that because many of those people don't exactly end up in a good scenario when they come across him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So he works as a security guard, basically in an underground car park, and he decides to try and make his own bigger, better centipede than the first movie. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Of course, the rest is just all pandering to the concept of the movie, get as much gore in there, as much nasty content as possible, and it definitely delivers on that part of things. Now, as I said, to a point, because the one thing that I think I would have liked to have seen done differently the most about this second instalment in the series is have a more serious tone. Because if the tone of this movie had been anywhere near as serious as the actual content, were you reading it on paper instead of seeing it on screen, this would be definitely one of the nastiest films ever made, but in a very serious way, to the point where you probably wouldn't want to watch it twice. Whereas the way it's done, it goes over the top, very deliberately. And I think it probably deliberately did that because of the fact that you wouldn't want to watch it again. Or maybe the creator, the writer, wouldn't want the film to be quite that mean-spirited. It's mean-spirited in a way, but you'll know what I mean when you actually watch it. There is kind of a difference between mean-spirited and mean-spirited. Certain films have mean characters, 
for instance, if you compared something like a monster movie, the monster is a mean character, but you can still get a ton of enjoyment out of it. You compare that then to something like Irreversible or Deliverance. That's a different kind of nasty. It's not played for laughs. It's played dead serious. And consequently, it has a very nasty feel. This movie airs more on the end of like the monster spectrum, where it goes so over the top that it becomes silly. Whereas if it were played darker, darker than the black and white frames of the movie itself, then I think it could have been done better for it. However, it still delivers on the experience that most people want from the film, because even with the lighter tones and the ridiculously over-the-top visuals of the way some of the characters look and act, it still would put most average horror fans off. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not the kind of movie where most people would want to eat while watching it, for sure, and there are different cuts and versions of it that you can see, with varying degrees of nastiness, let's say. So what then as far as the scores? Because I gave the first movie, I believe it was a 2.3 out of 5, which certainly isn't a great score, that is under par. So what about for this one? Because usually sequels, if anything, get worse. But, from what I've said so far, I seem to think it's better. So how am I going to score it? Well, first of all, for the story and the plot, I'm going to give it a 2. <laughs> because, surprise, surprise, it's trash. Of course the plot is trash, because it's supposed to be. Now, you could say, why am I giving it such a low score if it's supposed to be? Well, for the reasons that I said. You could have done so much more with this movie than what it did, and there are certain things which are ridiculous plot holes, and again, you could view this as kind of a spoiler, although I'm not about to spoil any particular scene or plot point, but the primary character has a go-to method of knocking people out, and it happens dozens of times throughout the film. There's even an entire scene where he walks around a room and does it to every single person. And it just doesn't work like that. If you did what he does to people, it would kill them. And he does it multiple times to multiple people, and it just acts like a turn-off button. Almost like hitting someone with the butt of a rifle in an action film, for instance. So in this one, there's just all these little nagging things like that, and I know that's a smaller one, but that's just one example. There are glaring plot holes, characters who are way too dumb for their own good, and it hurts it. I've got to say it hurts it. And as far as potential, I think that's probably the biggest reason why I am scoring it under par, because it has so much more potential. This really does have the potential to be probably one of the absolute nastiest and most disturbing films ever made. Legitimately. But it doesn't reach that point because it ends up being what many horror films are, but just turned up to 11, which is just gore. That's cool, but it could be more than that. What then as far as the characters? Well, for the characters, I am still rating it under par, but not by as much. I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. And of course, my standard score is a 5, and a movie can either go up or down from there. So for me, it's not far under par, just a little bit. And the reason why is because I think that some of the characters are actually quite interesting. In a similar way to Calvar, which of course we looked at last week, having absurd characters can definitely work but it works in a different way in something like Calvar to how it does here. These are absurd to the point of being kind of silly, whereas in Calvar they're absurd in the way of being kind of unnerving. And there's a big difference between the two, and if you watch those two movies I think you'll see what I mean. So for me the characters aren't awful, definitely not, but they could have been a bit better, I think. Just, just a little bit better and it would have gone to a 5 for me. As far as the visuals, well, I'm going to jump to the complete other end of the spectrum here and give it a really high score of a 9. And that's not too much of a surprise, because it does what you want it to do. Tons of gore, tons of nasty imagery, and unlike the first film, all the better for it, it doesn't cut away when certain things happen, like people getting knees cut open and various other things, having your face stapled to someone's backside. You want to see that stuff, because that's the point, it's supposed to be nasty. Whereas in the first movie, it cuts away from a lot of the medical stuff, and... I mean, what's the point then? If you're going to cut away, what's the point of the idea and having the reputation? You may as well earn it. So in many ways, I think it did a good job of having nasty, grimy, disgusting visuals. It certainly does. But the reason why I'm not quite giving it a full 10 is because the way it's shot and the frequency of the gore 
there's there's a fine line, let's just say, between using too much gore and using just the right amount. For me, this one goes overboard towards the end of the film, but there is a way of still having a lot of gore and not having that happen. And it's a difficult thing to do, I will admit that, but for me, that's just the slight reason why I'm not going for a full 10. A 9 is still very respectable, though, especially given the other scores. As far as the soundtrack, sound effects, for that, I'm giving it a five. They use some uh, pieces of meat and stuff in the recording studio to get certain sounds in the film. That's cool, that kind of effort put in, of course, as you would with many films. But still, certain sounds are way overblown in a very uh, Asian cinema kind of way. They are kind of notorious for doing that in their hardcore movies. And again, I don't like that. I like having over-the-top visuals sometimes, but over-the-top sounds don't really work as well because it ends up being cartoonish very quickly. And I think that many of the effects in this movie, squelching sounds, crunching sounds, they're way too loud, way too ridiculous. If you tone them back a little bit, you know, like, for instance, if you hit someone in the head with a bar, you don't want it to squelch, you want it to thud because that's more disturbing. Hearing someone's head squelch sounds ridiculous. Hearing just a dull thud is much more disturbing. So I would have preferred it if they'd have done some small changes like that, but for me, it's good enough overall, the soundtrack and the sound design in particular. And finally, for the rewatchability, you'd probably assume given how low my scores have been, at least for the most part, of course, that I would rate it low. But actually, I'm giving the movie the benefit of the doubt here by giving it a 5. And the reason why I'm giving it a 5 is because for all of the things that it does wrong, or does in an over-the-top way, it does a lot of things just as right as you would expect from the concept and from the reputation that the movie series has. I think that of the three, this one is, for the moment, the only one which comes close to actually delivering what people want from the human centipede as an idea, either if they love the idea or squeal at the idea, but still watch it anyway because they want to know what people are talking about. It delivers some of that, otherwise it could have been done better, I think. But overall, as a tabulation of all five categories put together, I actually am rating this one slightly higher than the first movie. I'm giving it a bang on 50-50, 2.5 out of five, which of course is a five out of 10. That's probably considerably higher to what many other people give it, horror fans or otherwise. Compared to the first one's 2.3, it's a definite improvement. For me, that exactly personifies my thoughts about the film. It's a 50-50 movie, 50% of it is great, it's nasty, it's gory, the other 50% is a little bit too overblown, a little bit too silly, and maybe didn't take itself seriously enough to make it that much more effective. But overall, it's certainly worth checking out if you are a gore fan, I mean, obviously you probably already have, but if you haven't, check it out. And that's it for this pick, of course, overall, so I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.